the inside yet. <laughs> but, yeah. um, okay. We can go do a review a little bit side by side with some photos. But at least yeah. for her place versus Grove at Pine Month, that is. I think Sanjay might have seen both of them, so he can tell. But anyways. I definitely saw Frederick's bird place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely did. No comment. <laughs> That's all I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay so we are on the same page okay i just want to make sure okay oh mm yeah -hmm. thanks good morning everybody how are you morning. good morning good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning um hey uh i need to review there the team is review the selling team is reviewing this today so uh this one mm -hmm. keep coming back uh mm -hmm. i i almost said flat no couple days ago <laughs> and then they come back and they ask us so um this this is the file i should we should look at right yes um that is a scenario that makes the most sense um the other one we're just coming in so much lower so as a um as a side note for everybody with venture landing um it is currently 226 units but they had two buildings burned down um, mm -hmm. which consisted of 26 units. So if we have them all together and build up again, it, it would be 252. So we ran two scenarios, either with keeping the unit size as is and not rebuilding the 26 units. In that case, our offer price was coming in fairly low or doing the rebuild of those two buildings, adding 26 units to it in year one and um, running the scenario that way. In that case, we were coming up at least a little bit more competitive. Um, but their asking price for this started at 32 million back in October, November of last year. They've now started to counter at 27.5, but we're still somewhere in 23 million max. Uh, but they did say, hey, please do submit an offer. So, well, I guess we're gonna consider. Okay, so I see you added this, Alan, thank you. Yes, because it, um, it changed drastically over the last six months. Yeah, uh, what about these rents? So this is a T12 rent, right? Is there a, like, a, what is their average rents now? Um, If you want, I think that should be that 1,211. Um, otherwise, that may just be on the actual unit mix page. If we want to see like last three months. Um, so 1211 is a, oh, that's the latest rent roll, right? That's the latest rent roll, yes. Uh, okay, so that's what it is. Um, and then yeah, and then actually the target rents, those are based on what the last three months of leases have been signed on because they're signing higher than they do on comps that I found in CoStar. Okay, and we're going to 1392 in year two. So that's mm -hmm. that's a good um, good one. New lease is signed. So we do this. Okay, and this is we think we can operate. Okay. Yeah, so that, that area is a little tough on. Okay, so I will leave this. I'm not sure. I, I want to do six just for us to have some cushion on this. From operation, we have to deal. Okay, and this is your matching to this. This is same. They don't have taxes. Is this county current county taxes assessment or this is yours? Uh, yes, that's based on, on what the bill January 2025 is going to be. Uh, so they will pay that. Mm -hmm. And then what is the amount based on our purchase price? That should be. So I'm going to just do a calculation here. This multiplied by our percentage by four. So it's slightly lower. Okay. So we have a chance based on our purchase price, we can lower it. Yes, possibly. Uh, 913. Is that a quote or that's an estimate? Um, I think that, oh, that's based on the quote that we got from JT a couple months back. That's not a new quote yet. 
Okay, that's fine. That's good. At least we have a code. Uh, property management. Ooh, they're paying like nothing on. What are they doing? That's like one and a half percent. Well, if they've been averaging twenty three vacancy over the last year, then I'm sure they didn't collect that many property management fees. Uh, yeah. So non taxes and insurance, one point zero eight. We're going up by about hundred thirty thousand a year in expenses. Yeah, um, that's a decent amount, and then we are at seventy four hundred a door. Uh, admin personnel. Let's just keep the personnel in that area. I think labor is uh, like salaries are lower, so I think we can we can get something, but I wouldn't reduce too much. Yeah uh advertising we need landscaping and grounds we have actually i have a guy who can really give us a good deal on this now so awesome um okay so that's ooh. so we are still oh because we are doing bridge yep it's a negative cash fall here cash flow here and Reef okay, closing costs. You reduce this, I'm just gonna reduce this a little bit more. Look at this huge numbers on exits, our cost, and Great. most of that is broker fee because title is whatever one percent. Yeah, on exit, we're saying 176 a door. Uh, 176 a door, and our purchase is. Per square, oh, it's still 139. All in is 190. Those are pretty high. So this is 23. 23. Yeah, um, I want to make sure that, um, so the cell underneath it, it's probably, yeah, it's linking to unit count. So that's already linking to 252. That probably should be adjusted to 226 because we're purchasing it with 226 units. Is this, this one is linking to the wrong unit? Um, 226. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's linking to that, it's fine. And it was more um the purchase price per door. That is linked to to the new unit count, not the old unit count. Oh, you mean not exit? Um, no, that should be fine. Okay. Um, if you go back to the dashboard, uh, cell C eleven, that one. I that see. is linked to the to to the new unit count. Yeah, so technically we are paying. I'm just gonna do this for a second. Two twenty six, one twelve a door. Yeah. And we are bringing money to build this. Yeah. So on this one, we have, so this is $130 per square foot. And this is, you did, okay, that's good. Uh, that's 19 units? Uh, it should be a total of 26 total. Okay, so 8672 is probably another whatever, yeah. eight units, right? I think so, yeah. So we're doing total square foot and at 130, we need to bring 2.7 million. We, we're keeping exterior capex of million signage and then existing units. Okay, so 86 unit at 10,000, fully remodeled unit tune up, 69. Yeah, and that's based on OM nodes. That is not because we've seen interior units. Okay, so for interior, we are keeping 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. So this is a, oh, wow, okay. Um, yeah, because we were cash flow negative year one. I see, that's a good point. Okay, so we'll leave that. This reserve, okay, six months of reserves. I think we can do four months. Okay. Um, oh, if I divide by three, I get four months, right? four months and then the four months here. Okay. Ooh, what happened? I didn't change anything. 
Oh, this, sorry. Typo. So if we bring pref, our raise is 9.4. If we bring some pref, it helps. Bridge would be critical on this at this rate. And uh, if we do a seller carry of 2 million, percent thirty six months years. So it helps a little bit, right? Not a not a whole lot off and look. Yeah, so it helps a little bit, not a whole lot. It's just uh on raise it's a big help. Um well, and when we were discussing this property uh, late last year, uh, the seller at that point in time was potentially open to do a portion of seller carry if we could provide a little bit more of a competitive offer. So they might still be open to that if we bring it up. Yeah, so the offer dollar per square foot, JAP, it's this. So this is based on 226 units, the dollar per square foot here, basically. Uh, total all, okay, that's right. So total all in is based on our CapEx. So we're buying it very expensive, $180 per square foot. And then we think we can exit at 261. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, you want to then adjust the cap rate at sale higher than 5.75 to just see if it looks more reasonable that way for DeSoto? You mean six? Yeah, I mean, if, if that makes yeah, makes so this more comfortable. Yeah, it's six. Raise yeah. is still 9.4. Mm -hmm. ah, it's a pretty hefty raise. I'm just stuck on this. I don't think we can exit at this in five years. I mean, who knows? Uh, cost of construction is in that range or higher. Um, we have a good buffer because if we do this construction at $100 a square foot, that's about half a million buffer sure. we have. Um, but so that's definitely, that's, yeah. So we have some buffer here on this, right? Mm -hmm. um, rents are, we are $2 a square foot. $2 a square foot at exit. I mean, $2 a square foot technically in that area is there now. I mean, I know like single families are going even higher in that area. Um, so the rents, rent assumptions are fairly reasonable. Electric is paid by tenants and we build back this. Yeah, we are doing 14% economic losses. So it's a decent, decent one here. Yeah, I mean, this is the biggest concern for me. Otherwise, at 22 and a half, the deal works. You can do 22.6, maybe. Yeah, I mean, deal works at this. Yeah, when I spoke to the broker yesterday, they did. Uh, I, I threw out like, "Yeah, we're going to be around twenty three million, if if anything," and they said they had a few offers higher than ours, but most of them were within the same range. So I don't think we're going to be too, um, too far off. Yeah, 
uh, and we don't have a depth goat, right? So this is we are we are. Yeah, that's a bit of a of a guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's do this. Um, let let's let's submit this LOI at this. Gotcha. Uh, ask Derek for a quote. Yep. You share this underwriting with him. Okay, sounds and good. And ask for a quote on a bridge. And interest only is twenty four. Actually, interest is. We're refinancing anyway. What if I refinance in three years? Okay, that's what it's uh, Ask Derek for a quote. Let's submit this LOI. Uh, like, do do twenty five plus sixty day close. Okay. But then internally, we need to make sure the rest of the team is good for this. Okay. But. Let's at least start the conversation here. I, I th and I'm going to hold very firm at this price. Yeah. Like, I don't think we have. And, and if they say like, hey, last time you were at 23 and a half, what happened? Right. And the yeah. biggest thing is like last year when we were underwriting, we were raising equity and we were underwriting deals at 18 IRR. Right. And now we are at 20 IRR deal underwriting. So two IRR point is the erosion here on the price. It just doesn't work, right? So, and that, that's the key is just the equity is more expensive in the market and we're seeing pushback on equity raise. So this is the price we feel comfortable we can raise and close. Got it. So. Um, okay, on it. Okay, so that's this. I'd like to review the that San oh San Antonio one we can't do we don't have the price. No, we can't do, but um, at least we can see if we want to move forward with it. Um, well, we don't know until we have a price guidance, right? Yeah. Uh, location wise, I saw location looked decent. Yeah. Um, what is the location? Uh, Villas de Toscana. I'll put the address in the chat. Um, so th this deal for everyone is uh, off market from the new property management company that we're going with Hori in Horizon. So they have a brokerage arm. They, they said they're talking to the seller. It's not advertised yet. They like to see they can work with us. Of course, their hope is they get the property management right away from the beginning, right? So uh, so off market channel. I really like property management company where they can bring us deal and they are into the deal coming with us. So generally, I was looking at the market. Um, there is a Hyatt Vacation Club close to it. I don't know exactly this area of San Antonio, but I know there is a. Um, my daughter had a gym gymnastic meet uh, somewhere in that area. Uh, and there is a SeaWorld, there is a, um, this other, what is the other one? Uh, six Flags. They have a Six Flags. They, there's a Six Flag also, right? So there yeah. is, okay, so SeaWorld is there. I think Six Flag is in, in this area too. So that's on the other side of 151. So, but this is a little bit more in, inside. And generally this vest is a good uh, income income wise so we'll have to see but generally i think i like that side oh yeah i was looking on the map look at this huge parking lot i don't know what this like these small little buildings look at the parking oh uh, I, I don't know what it is uh <laughs> what these buildings are oh these are uh multiple buildings multiple stories that's why they have a huge parking lot Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I like the area. We would be interested, but until we know the price, we can't really do a whole lot. Right. Pete's deal, we would get the uh, there. Hendrix, do we need to review Hendrix? Um, we can. Uh, so that was that was Villa Rosa. Hendrix is something different. That's already moved to detail underwriting. We reviewed oh, that. Okay. Yeah. 
and Villa Rosa as well. And Tyler, that, that was Pete Steele. Um, yeah, yeah. That one um, we, can, we can take a look at as well. Um, it did not look that great when it came to their adjusted asking price. Which one? At Ensign that you have up right now. Um, what what is the price they said? So they they lowered it to seventeen five. They were at twenty twenty million a couple months back. But same thing as with Ventura Landing. There's pressure from the LPs that the GP team sells because the LPs want out. So they lowered the price. Uh, napkin. At the time when we were initially looking at it, we were coming out at fifteen. Um, napkin in this case also look good, but there's napkins based on no taxes and no insurance. So once that came into play, it changes everything. Um, wow. So they're asking 17 now and <laughs> 17 and a half. Yes. That feels like there's a big gap. Uh, Yuval, this is 23 build, 118 doors. Okay, so you got the repair maintenance correct, personnel. Where it is, Sanjay? Which city it is, this property? Uh, Ennis, Texas. Oh, Ellen, Texas. Ennis, E-N-N-I-S. So that's okay. also the DFW area. You can name a city. Oh, that's close to Dallas, yeah. That's close to Dallas. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, got it. Yeah, taxes and insurance are taxes and insurance. So 75 a door. What is this? 1364. Oh, 15% in year one. Well, they still uh they're still in the process of leasing up. So right now they're still at a 23% vacancy. Three percent. How are you gonna operate at three percent here? That's like three percent. Uh, how many units? That's like 96 uh, in a whole year, only three evictions, right? 3% means in a whole year, only three evictions. Okay. Uh, yeah, 3%, especially in these uh, secondary markets, uh, we got to have economic losses. But it's brand new. I see it's brand new. That's why you have it. Um, okay, maybe maybe five percent. But we'll we'll have to go out and prove the data. Yeah. Um. But this is our playtime, right? So. Um, yeah, and actually, when it comes to rents, um, from what I've been seeing on their last three months of um, new leases. Seems rents are going down slightly. It's only like 20, 20, 30 bucks per oh, leaf. But this it's is the like, same, these same owners, right? Yes, same owners. But the interesting thing is because their LPs are pressuring, they are now almost with their backs against the wall where they just need to sell some quick. So they need to commit to a team that can close. Yeah, and look at this. Uh, this is a lot better purchase, right? $140 square foot, $229 per square foot exit for a 23 build. Yeah. Given its way out there, not you know Dallas, San Antonio, Houston, primary markets, and exit rents are still $1.63. Um, so I like I like this one better at this price, of course, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're going to be competitive, but um, at and least it's not. The thing is, I'm not sure what somebody else can do here. Like, okay, we're reducing the rent. Even if I increase the rent by 2%, uh, be a little aggressive. Yeah. Like it may bump it up by, you know, barely a million. There's still a five million dollar gap. Yes. Like, I don't know. So yeah, just just let them know this guidance is eleven uh, in in mid elevens. I would just say that, and then 
reach out if, if they're interested in middle labs for us to do something. All right. And then Alok actually also has one that he would like to have reviewed, uh, rest in apartments in Conroe. Sorry, who? Alok. Okay. Okay, go ahead. You're, you're muted, Taylor. I'll look here on mute. Yeah, 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 I did it. No, I'm good. Okay. So uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Can we see it now? All right. So like uh, I spoke with the, with the broker and uh, he said like the 212 units are there, as it mentioned there. And he said, uh, all the units need the uh, the value addition work is required to to change the countertops and the flooring. And as per operation memorandum, it is not showing like all the units are needed uh, the the work, but it is showing there. I mean, as for the broker, uh, what he told me. So I took this one. I mean, the, what he told me, uh, twenty one point two billion for for those two hundred twelve units, and. I mean, the number I ran is not looking great, but you have to tell me where, where we can do better. So um, you tell me, Sanjay, where should I go now? We should actually first go to the actual say, unit mix page. and uh, This one? Yes. So Okay. So I have a comment. I have a comment here. The vacancy is showing as per this year uh, from the red IQ or something, 5.8, 1.9, and the 4.3. But when I look at the, um, the, th this is showing pretty less vacancy. But when I went to um, the actual rent roll, it is showing like 10% vacancy. Mm -hmm. And I, I check in the, in the other place, uh, like when I went to apartment.com, it is showing there 20 units are available to rent out. So that means the vacancy is 10% for sure as for the rent roll and as for this, uh, then I'm I'm really confused. Is it reliable source 5.8% and from where we are getting this? Okay, so the 5.8% the 5 mm -hmm. is the average vacancy that they had throughout the entire year. Um, the rent roll right now, if that's around 10%, that would be the current vacancy. So that, that would be the most accurate prediction of vacancy at the moment. Okay, so, okay, okay, I will take, I mean, anyway, okay, so it's for last 12 months, not for the last month, okay, makes sense, okay. But but it looks pretty low to me, I mean, and honestly speaking, but that's fine, the data showing, data speaks, so that's okay. All right. Okay. And then for comps. How um, I know they they had the target rents already in the rent rule. How were they lining up with the comps that you found um, for for other rents of similar properties? Yeah, yes. So those are like kind of similar to the property they are leasing in that area. So I can. I mean, they're showing ten fifty five, and as for the last month comp, last month rent, showing the eleven thirteen and eleven fifteen for last three months. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which is like kind of in line and uh, as per nearby property running around 1150, 1120, 1110, something in the co-star report. So it is pretty much in the line with the, what the rent is going on in the market. Okay. So, uh, I mean, the rent increase to go from, uh, from 1130, I'm assuming the first year because 11, 12, 1115 is, 1115 is the right now rent for the last three months, the last one month. So we can mm -hmm. stress to 1130 first year. And then I'm after rehab or some work, we can we can go for 1175 or something like that. But my question comes here. I mean, rents are compressing all over the you know Texas market, or I believe most of the places in San Antonio, Houston. So yeah. shall we keep uh, pumping up all this, you know, 5% increase, 10% increase, or something like that? So th that's why we that's why we also um, check out the comps just to see what the market is doing. 
um, sometimes dollar square foot can can be a guidance as well because not every not every building has very similar sized units. Um, quite often, if we are unsure of how the rent growth is moving, like if we don't see a big discrepancy between where our rents are and competitive rents are, we just go with like a three percent rental increase because that's kind of where cost of living increases are usually at. Um, unless we have a bridge to like bridge to gap, like a big gap to to like close basically between where competitive rents are in the area and where we are. So if you don't see that, if we're already in a very similar ballpark, then I would not assume that we're going to do a tremendous rent increase over the next year or so, uh, or over the it's next not, few years. It's not tremendous, like 3%, 4% we're increasing, like from 1130 to 1174, 1174 to 1197, which is like, but, but I don't know, like if you talk to any apartment complex right now, like the other circles, they're they're compressing the rents like you know it's not at loss but anyway i'm just this was my general question like while doing underwriting should we keep pumping up the rents or we should leave it like three percent two two percent which like two percent is your expense negative and this is two percent positive but anyway i just keep it seven percent for the first year to uh to uh do with some upgrades uh because target rent is 1170 so i keep 1130 first year because we cannot bump it all units together so like, you know, 30% units first year and some more work. So I kept it like that way. But still numbers are not looking great to me. The real estate tax is 1.9%. I, I check here. So the value will go from the selling price. So that's why it's going pretty high. The real estate tax, if you look at here, from the 282 to 345. Insurance, I'm keeping 50% more what they, are, what they have right now. So I bring it to 280, but it may be more a little bit. If we get the real quote. Contract service, which came by, is it generally fine to keep minus 30%? I'm not sure about it. Well, for that, you kind of have to look at, take a look at what, what is included in contract services. We're always going to usually have some contract services, like, for example, pest control. Um, if that is all they have, then we we probably yeah. want to stick within the same ballpark. Like, if, if their current contract service is around, like, 6,000, they don't have a tremendous amount and yeah and it's not a yeah it's not worth to do that's fine i mean one thousand yeah. dollars is not making gonna make a big difference electrical oh. i keep the same and i mean i keep pretty much the same because their expense ratio is 52 uh, 52 percent so which is pretty good so i didn't change anything i don't think there's any room you can you can play with all these numbers no, and we, the property sorry go ahead i don't we, we usually keep utilities around that two percent increase because Usually we can't do a lot there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just keep the the one what you're showing in the you know by default. So I kept everything same. I didn't change anything here. Mm -hmm. The the property management fees is three percent, which is also standard. So everything kept same, but the numbers are not making any sense to me. So I don't know how to play, where to play. Either you or Sanjay can you know jump in and tell me, hey, let's do this, let's try this. And if you look at dashboard, it is showing. Um, how many units is this one again? 212, 212. Okay. okay. So our rents are $1.55, okay. And scroll down, what is the expenses? Okay. Um, yeah, so 7,500 a door, that's pretty reasonable. Okay, go back to dashboard. Okay. This is a new loan? This is a new loan, yes. They don't have any assumable loans. It will be a new loan, yes. So, okay. so I think you can put five point nine, uh, uh, right here, Sanjay. Yeah, yeah, because I think the rates have come down a little bit. So five point nine, okay. Okay. 5.9, okay. Um, and then scroll down. What is the DSCR? So scroll down a little bit. So DSCR is one point eight five, uh, I thirty six there. Um, okay. So price. that means we can go loan wise, we can go full 25% up to the 75%. So you can change down payment to 25 instead of 30. So right here, let me change to 25. Okay. okay. So that helps a little bit, but not a, a capex. Uh, yeah. 1.5. 1. Yeah. 
Should I go there? Yeah, let's take a look. So capex wise, it's so what I did do uh, even after talking to the broker, he said that all the units need work. And I planned to go yesterday, but I couldn't go yesterday. So I'm, I'll be out for, for a week in the coming week. Oh, sorry, from starting from tomorrow. So after yeah. coming back, I will go and visit the units. But as of now, I keep 212 units with $5,500, you know? Yeah. So That's I just kept like that, right? So, um, so this is, um, yeah, so CapEx is pretty reasonable there. Go back to dashboard. Can I see? Okay, let I'll ask later. Okay. Mm -hmm. The it's at eighty four. What is the exit cap here? Exit cap. Scroll um, down. Scroll down. Okay. Okay. Six. Exit cap is six, and we are oh, we are purchasing a seven point five four cap. Six point five. The ex exit cap. No, that's, okay. That's at refi. Um. Yeah. So this one, like loan, is what's killing us. Um. Mm -hmm. Only the biggest thing, the um, just cap actual 7.54. Yeah, so the purchase is that's a very good cap rate. Um, so what, what is this like? Why is this? Uh, go, go to PL again. Let's look at PL. Okay, uh, scroll up, scroll up. Okay, okay, so our rent is 11.29 in year one. It's dollar fifty five. We have twelve percent economic losses, which is where they are currently. Ah, uh, yes. So it's I mean, just a stabilized uh, purchase and operation, right, and right. then not mm -hmm. including. Okay. Uh, so so cl click on the taxes. How are the taxes calculated there? Okay, taxes over here in this same sheet. Same sheet. Oh, same sheet, sorry. Okay, uh, you know. I-20. 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 Okay, let me go there. Give me one second. I-20. Okay, yeah, taxes, I calculate this is 1.9%. Uh, I checked with the with the county. Uh, uh, their tax document is showing the 1.9% total tax. So this is coming 1.9 on the, on the purchase price. So purchase price right now, I'm assuming just to like for the heck of I put 18, 18 million. So 18 million of 1.9% is coming 345, 600. Okay, that's fine, that's good. So scroll down, let's look at the 3% uh, repair maintenance. Okay, 461 a little, no, repair maintenance is 461 admin. Repair maintenance. Personnel. You can reduce the personnel a little bit. I just broke the door. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm going to So which, what should I do, uh, Sanjay? I think personnel. We can play, see if we can do with lower personnel, maybe minus okay. 10%. Minus 10, okay. The dot two a little bit here. 10 a door. Advertising length. So 74 a door. Now scroll down and let's see what the cash situation is here on this. Okay. Uh, so it's a very healthy DSCR. Okay, let's go back to dashboard. Okay. Oh, can you can you look at the closing cost tab for a second? Okay, sure. Closing cost. Uh, three point four. Purchase. Why change that to two and a half percent? So D right here. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Two point five. Okay. And then change the L seven to three and a half percent. L. This one? Three and a half. Uh, three and a half, okay. 3.5, this is it, okay. Okay, now let's look at the, um, let's look at the ca uh, CapEx tab again for a second. I want to see okay. our reserves. Mm -hmm. Roll up. Okay, so that's very reasonable. Okay, let's go back to dashboard. Okay. So this is this will improve, but to... yeah, let's let's do this. Change the mm -hmm. um two sixty. Change the interest rate to five point six. Okay, assuming five point six. Okay. Let's see if we do get 
uh, that doesn't make that big of a difference. Mm, yeah, not too big yet. Yeah, so I mean, price wise, it has to go down. So change the purchase price to 16. Okay. Yeah, I mean, looking at all the other levers, yeah, 16 is where it start to make sense. So I would talk yeah. to the broker like, hey, we, that's where we are at. They may have okay. a higher rent increase. Do they say mm -hmm. any any other options or any other opportunities for higher like other income increases? Uh, it it mentioned only. I I checked the operate their memorandum. It's showing only the carport. Uh, you can you can add the you know carport or uh, the covered parking. But you know I believe that's expense, so it's not going to make a huge difference. But the uh, rest of the things are already in place. Everything they they have taken care of the pet fees and the parking fees or something. I mean, everything is there. They mentioned just like you can add the carport uh, to, to add the rent, to add the, uh, you know, to add the value. Mm. So, I mean, I can get some idea if I go there, which definitely I will go just to, you know, to get an idea whether we go for or not go, that's fine. But to understand the property, to understand the market, we'll definitely go like it's one hour from here, the condo area. But I will go definitely next uh, around mid of next week. Yes, yes, that's fine. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I would. That's the bad. I I see sixteen ish. So I would start with like low high fifteen is where we could. Let's let's try that. fifteen just to for the heck of. Let's see. Yeah, now numbers are good. <laughs> yeah, that's really good, but that would be really hard to get. And yeah, 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 scroll yeah. down your your purchase cap rate probably now is like nine percent. Yeah, so that's uh, yeah. mm -hmm. that's a tough one. This, you believe this is too high, Sanjay? This is not like technically. Yeah, there would be other buyers, right, who would be willing <laughs> to pay. Okay, so let's give fifteen point fifteen five. Yeah, so okay. I would say yeah, like mid to high fifteens is where we would come in. Okay. So Reasonable, yeah. Okay. Say, hey, look, we are too far apart. They would yep. say, where you are, it's like mid to high 15s. Got you. Okay. Maybe you can discuss some of our assumptions with the broker to okay. clarify. But beyond that, you know, okay. leave this one and then say, okay, what, what is there a uh, okay. off market? Do you have any other off market that we can discuss? Okay. Okay. Because I got a call for, um, for this, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I just fill up the form and then I get a call from the broker about this as well. So, I mean, they are following up means they are like, you know, looking for, and they said the, the last date or approx date is end of next month to to get the offers. So they have we have time. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, that's cool. And just last one question here um, to for Sanjay Sanjay here, if you look at the CapEx. So my question is like, uh, this is eight thousand. Is for the complete rehab uh, as a default, or is for the guy keep fifty five hundred dollars? Is it too less? Yeah, no. Right. So we 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 have just this as guidance. So typically we guidance. may start with some estimate, but then after the visit, is okay. where you kind of finalize and go with that and form up the number. Okay, so fifty five hundred is also reasonable, right? To um, to rehab the units, correct? Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's reasonable. Okay, and I have one more question. I put a note here. Uh, one second, come on. No, I think I'm fine. So, okay, I got the idea here, and uh, thanks for all the information, Sanjay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, is uh, Rodolfo here? He had to drop a little bit earlier. He's not here. Okay. So Park at Cumberland came back and I think I think they're motivated and uh, pricing seems good. So I'd like to see if that one, something can be fit through. So um, uh, so, um the only issue I immediately saw was that their expense ratio is currently very high or that or it has a typo, but um, yeah. It looked like it was 94% expense ratio at the moment. Whoa. Well, let me pull up that synthesis so we can just have a take have a quick look. Um, 
because that was just a first glance. And just a quick uh, note to you guys, I get a call from uh, Marcus Milchev guy uh, for the Forest Farm apartment. So I checked the Forest Farm apartments. Uh, it was underwritten by, I believe, uh, Rodolfo. So just to let you know, like uh, Forest Farm apartments is back in the market. So do, you, do, do you guys have to drop off uh, right away? Because I wanted to ask you something I, uh, on on one of the properties that I'm looking at. But, you know, of course, go ahead first. And just, if not, we can always look it up you know, later. But... Um, well, I think this will take just one minute and we can hop over. So... The big concern that I just see here is that currently they have an astronomically high insurance quote or something went wrong while we're putting this together. Uh, yeah, they had, what, 40, 24 units burned down to the ground or something, I think? Shit. That's or true. They did have... They did 24 have... units burned um, that I think we're there's something happening with those units. So. Yes, so... That insurance quote is that, or that insurance note is actually correct. So they've been paying close to somewhere between eighty and a hundred thousand a month in insurance costs over the last twelve months. Yeah, that's that's throwing everything off. Because if this was at a more normalized expense ratio, um, this would probably make more sense. As they're asking, I don't know if that's still correct, but at the time they were asking. 28 oh right now they're asking 28.9 when we were initially looking at they were asking for 33 million that was six months ago so i guess something's still up with that insurance and yeah that may require a bit of a further deep dive yeah okay um but yeah okay. louis wanna... Sounds good. I am sure are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Are you available now? I'd like to review the deck and go through oh, the deck. No, earliest 12 30. Earliest. Okay. okay, that's fine. That's fine. We'll yeah, work okay. a little bit and then yeah. we can connect. Should I revise the invite from 1 to 12 30? Uh, that's, yeah, just leave it at 1. We can join. Um, okay. I'll get a couple calls, but I should be available. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you guys. Okay. Hey Louis, you want to go over your question before we uh before sure. we end up? Yeah, we... yeah, I do, I do. So let me let me try to share. Can you see it now? I guess you can, right? Yeah. All right, so this is uh, Eagle Brook Apartments, uh, just outside of Houston, close to Baytown. Um, so I talked to the broker yesterday. He said that that the guide price was, he didn't say a number, but he just said like, you know, mid to high 20s. So I just put here the 27 million. And, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm actually looking for the napkin. So uh, because there is an assumption of loan here available. And it's uh, at uh, the terms are really favorable. Uh, as far as I can see, it's a 2.5, uh, it's a hot loan. So it's 2.5 fixed uh, for like 32 years. And mm -hmm. uh, so the value that they still owe is around 19.2. Um, so that's why I put here, if I'm using 27, that would represent a, an LTV of 71%, which puts a loan at about pretty much what they owe okay. right now. But is that what I need to do? That's kind of the question, one of the questions that I had. Okay, so loan assumption is good to know, but it 
really does not come into play all that much when we are looking at napkin. Okay. Uh, just because okay. right now we want to get an idea of, hey, are we even in the right ballpark or are we miles and miles apart when it comes to this pricing? Mm, um, okay. The loan assumption will definitely come into play when we're doing the detailed underwriting because then we are going to be able to use that portion in the equity stack on the dashboard. And that will have a tremendous effect on our, our returns, basically. Sure. Um, so for right now, it does kind of... So for uh, right now, just focus on this side, basically on the napkin analyzer. Uh, and just put like, you know, that the effective rent or, or the, you know, the average rent actually, which is, you know, 1490 uh, times the unit count times 12. So basically just do that, right? And just get a number from there. Yes. And see and if it kind of pays itself. Check what the, what the cap rate is. Yeah. So the cap rate that I put here, the 6.3 is just based off uh, the cost start report. Mm hmm I know you. I think you had put there, or it was there by default, uh, five point eight. But yeah. I'm using six point three. That's kind of what it should be from the court, the cost of report for a four to five star type of deal. Which is this is I guess this would fall into that category. This is twenty ten, uh, twenty twenty built. I mean, so that's why I'm using six point three. Uh, that's pretty much it so so yeah so that kind of answers the question the first question that i had so just do the napkin here and if it pencils out then we'll go into more detail right yes correct okay. correct and then it, at this point like if you see any big red flags or any big green flags like for example a really favorable loan assumption i would consider that a really really good green flag if this yeah. is in a flood zone and in flooded three months ago, that I would call a ginormous red flag and yeah. I would take that in, into consideration. Um, or if, you know, 12 crimes happened on a property over the last month, that would be something to take into consideration. Yes, right now we want to take a look at, hey, do these numbers check out? Are we in the same range? Yeah. But also, do I want to run away very, very quickly from this property or do I like it? Okay. Those okay. are kind of two big questions. Okay. And then if it does pencil out, as yes. far as I can see, then should I just put it in the notes so, so you can move it to like, you know, initial underwriting or? So that that would, or... that's what we would do in the 9 a.m. call okay. to then review it as a team and say, hey, okay. we like it. let's move it over to detail underwriting. If it screams at you um, saying, hey, this is looking absolutely wonderful so like right now if you see in cell c21 if that number is within the range i want to say like within 20 percent of that asking price you don't see any big red flags go ahead and already start with detail underwriting follow your gut so so in that case what you're saying is like you know so the walking value at cap mm -hmm. If it's showing a higher value than what they're asking, that's a good sign, I guess. That's right? a really good sign. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's what I wanted to, to to be sure about. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, yeah I'm gonna start even, doing the detail on the writing. <laughs> yeah, but especially it when it comes with with broker deals, if we are within twenty percent of their asking price, yeah, that's that's a positive. Brokers always add a little bit of a buffer for their own yeah. negotiation room between what the actual price would be where it would sell at unless of course the seller is extremely unreasonable which we won't find out until we start negotiating but yeah of course. if we're actually landing at 28 and their asking price is somewhere like mid 20 like mid to high 20 million go ahead that's looking positive yeah yeah and, and i guess these numbers they don't even take into account uh this side of the equation like you know the loan assumption and all that Mm -hmm. These numbers are just good looking by by themselves, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Correct. We will. Uh, we at this point we just want to try and make a decision quick. Sure. Good. Great. We can move it forward to detail and go into the capex, look at comps in more detail, dive into the PNL. But unless it looks good, don't bother. Don't bother going there because then sure. we lose some time. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, this one, it, I think it does look good, like, to be honest, really good. 
And that's not even taking into account the loan assumption. Um, so I think we have to move fast on this one. And also I check other numbers that of course they don't, they're not reflected here yet, but yeah. looking at the OM and the, like, you know, uh, um, of course, OM of course has to be verified, of course, but, but, but still, like I saw that the, the income in the area is around 132,000. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, we need to check that because the Corsa report says otherwise, but still like, you know, maybe that pocket is something good. So, mm -hmm. and if it is, that, that also shows why this is actually above market. This is not really below market, the rent, I mean. But yeah. can I add something here? Uh, sorry sure. to interrupt. But yeah, for yeah, me, it looks to me very, uh, very red, uh, red flag. The expense ratio is thirty two percent, which is I never ever heard about it. Something wrong in the data. Usually fifty percent or fifty five percent is in Texas is very normal. So sure. why but, it is? But this is twenty twenty ten build uh, ALUX. So maybe that said, right? Of course, I haven't looked into those numbers yet. No, but, my friend, it cannot be. I mean, twenty ten. I mean, I mean, like, you know. Yes. The expense ratio on this is actually forty nine percent, so it it's yeah it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually forty nine percent. I don't know why it shows here thirty two. Oh, okay. Forty nine is reasonably good, yeah. but yeah, thirty two is impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and and okay. what is the assumable row? Which is uh, which is a question, to? Ellen. So why does it show thirty two here? Yeah. So I mm -hmm. personally don't like to use that napkin analyzer. It, oh, it, okay. It looks. It's trying to pull in a lot of information that yeah. honestly just tries to make the process more difficult. I personally like to use the napkin anal analyzer right next to it, uh, the multifamily um, only. Oh, this one. this one right here? Um, it's on this side? This, yeah, because we, we linked it directly to the actual the unit mix page. And at that point, it's just you're looking at five different things. Current rents, average yeah. square foot per door, average market rent, yeah, you calculate the expense ratio based on expenses and income. And then you go and take a look and, and you're saying like, hey, if this is like a six and a half cap rate and it's like, oh, well then value is 21. Right. Um, right. I, I'm i going to use a quote here from my husband. He works very hard to be lazy at his job. <laughs> He's in right. IT. So he basically right. he likes to work hard <laughs> to automate things and to make mm -hmm. things easy for himself so that when we actually have uploaded everything, we can just do things at a quick glance instead of us having to go and break our heads on things yeah. um, and, and figure out how or what or what have you. So if okay. this is somewhere between a six and a six and a half cap, then we're landing at like what, at, at around 22 million? Yeah, yeah between 22, 21 and a half and then 23 at current yeah. rents. And this is purely used on the data that they provided us in the rental and in the expense ratio. This is not even looking at, at, at the market rents all that much. Market rents we would look at for the market value on exit. Sure. Um, but yeah, right now, I mean, 22-ish million if, if it's a 6.3 cap-ish. Yeah. So are we a little bit lower? Yes, but if we check out 22 million versus 27 that's that's just within that 20 percent range yeah go ahead move forward yep. check it out and because usually usually our napkin is always the most positive version of our actual bid once we take a deep dive once you go look into the om once you find out all the hidden skeletons in the closet your underwriting is never going to look as clean as it did on napkin. So if this starting point is so far off with detail, we're never going to get better. However, if I hear a loan assumption with a 2.5% interest rate, that may have a pretty positive effect because right now we're like closer to 6%. Six, yeah. Interest rate. I mean, that's going to do something to your monthly mortgage payments um that's going to be very positive for your cash flow so that that may really work in the benefit of this particular property um so take it to detail done okay. decision made yeah perfect cool yep yeah. i'll go ahead and do that then yeah I'll start working on that all right okay. perfect okay good thank you Ellen. no problem anytime um
Maria, I see your I see your node for fountains of Jupiter. You want to pull it up? Well, we went through that one. Um, I think a week ago. Doesn't really have any change. We got some new financials. Okay. But really, the financials were just um, this, just adding the cable, which was um something that had been a discrepancy before Sunday was like, Hey, you know, there's something that, that was off. Mm -hmm. So the new financials just showing the cable, there's really no different, no change in it. Okay. So I was hoping that Sanjay would want to say something about it. Cause you and I were rooted a week ago, I think. And then we made some changes and then it was just kind of like, let's just hold off and see where that goes. Okay. Yeah, uh, the market rents, I mean, they are um, they are uh, uh, able to uh, bring up the market rents on on their uh, on their uh, roll up on their uh, rent roll, but that's because they have like the um, cable fee and you know the pet fee, you know, so they it's showing higher, but it's not really higher. <laughs> So that's how they're able to kind of just bump that up. It's not really higher. They're still very low in, in there and they're low in the area. So I I just kind of wanted Sanjay to yeah. hopefully if can get him in here. Um, um no, right now he's he he I know they're working. Yeah, on maybe, maybe tomorrow time. or or Friday. Um definitely Friday. Um possibly tomorrow at four, but can't make promises on that. But Friday, 9 a.m., yes, 100%. We can go and do yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, just to see, you know, where if, if we just want to just keep moving on it or just, you know, archive it or see what he wants to do. Sounds good. Sounds mm -hmm. good. I know we have, a, I just checked, so we have until August 15th or so for CFO. So we have a, yeah, if we tackle this on Friday, we should, we should be in good yeah. shape. And I do have a question about, um, there's one that was assigned to me, um, and it shows not interested already marked in there. I, I'm not sure why. Um, let me go check. So that would be Ballarat Realm. Is that the one? Yes. Okay. Let me let me open it up. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I couldn't change it to, it says I, it, 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 I can't change it. I don't have the authority to, but it was already marked that way. So I see it in, and let me just share this. Um, I see it in Monday. Mm -hmm. It's this one, right? Ballard Realm in, in initial underwriting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a broker one. Um, it's a new build. Did you see it in here that we had? Yeah, it's in there. Uh, it says not interested in the in the area where it says interested and not interested. Not in the comments. Oh, in the okay. Monday. Oh, got it. This. Monday. Okay. So this is just a, this is a calculation between um, these numbers. So here oh. we would like to see, ideally, about a 20% increase um, of going from purchase to sale, ideally. Are we going to tie ourselves to that? No, not necessarily. Um, but we we ideally like to see an interested here and a yes here. Um, this is still a pretty big jump in between the two. If we're if if value is going to move from like nine million, that's not terrible. Like it may not be that ideal twenty percent, but a nine million increase is not bad. Like I. I'd like to get that any day of the week. So um, this is just a, an indication for that between moving, um, if we have a 20% potential increase, that's that's what that indicates. Okay. So go right ahead. Don't even worry about it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Any other questions? Anything else I can help you guys with? No, yeah, Maria, on that one, typically, I don't think I've seen one that said interested, and I was worried oh. when I did, so. Okay, yeah, I was worried, I was like, 
Not yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> there are like things, but it, yeah. um, basically what, um, so this is, let me, let me share this again. So there's basically two boxes that help us make a very basic judgment indication. Mm -hmm. It will be this one. And that's the increase between this and this, and then the MC buy box fit. What does that all check? Because there's also very few that say yes. Um, but that's based on, is it an existing multifamily? Is it more than 100 doors and under 300? Is it newer than 1980? Is the average income in the area over 50,000? Is it not in a flood zone? And is basically the crime rate higher than a C, according to crimegrade.org? So that is just a very quick indication for any of us to say like, hey, is this is this our unicorn, basically? Is this the ideal property that we can go after? This thing has nothing to do with the numbers. This is just, do we like the characteristics and demographics of that area? And mm -hmm. is it our unicorn? Nothing to do with numbers. This has to do with numbers, but it doesn't even mean if our sales price is matching or maybe even under what they're asking for. So we do want to look at some big picture things, but these are, do we have a unicorn on our hands? Yes or no, basically. Um, and a lot of these are going to say no. And as we all know what our buy box criteria, it's not because it's not a 100% match that it is an automatic no. It could be a 1979 property and still be tremendous. Are we then gonna move forward with yeah, Yes, absolutely. Is it our unicorn that it fits a hundred percent with our buy box criteria? No. But we can we can go into the gray zone. It doesn't need to be perfect all the way around. It just doesn't need to go too far off. Like if on everything we are, you know, 1960s in a flood zone, high crime area, you know what? That's not for us. But if it's if it's just one or two parameters where we are slightly off on go ahead. It's fine. Um, so that, that's what these two columns basically mean. Um, it's to spot the unicorns. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate that explanation. <laughs> We're trying to make it easy, easy peasy for everybody. But of course, if I just put those things in and don't explain it, then yeah. <laughs> Hey John, go ahead. Uh, um, so I just had a question if there's any leads that need to be um, assigned. Oh, uh, I think we have some. Yeah, okay. How many do you want? I need a, um, <laughs> all of them. All of them. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> do not do that. Go with Jasper. <laughs> So at the moment in our yes. pool, we have about 33, sorry, 38 new leads. In our initial underwriting, we have 45 new leads. So yeah, you you don't want me to assign all of them to you. Um, yeah, I just need to um, start underwriting again. I've been uh, sort of not doing anything for the past two weeks. So. Okay. You like Dallas, right? Uh, it doesn't really matter, actually, because since I'm in Austin, it doesn't matter. I'm like right in the middle. Okay. The center uh, of the universe. Let me let me tack you to a few. You want to do like two ish, three, more? I'll I'll grab two. Two? Okay. Got it. Um, let me jump in. I got a new San Antonio one. Um we have a lot on the Carolinas right now, which is weird. That's a great market. Yeah. I have two San Antonio's. There you go. Assigned. Uh -huh. Okay. Anybody else? Um, Ellen. Oh, oh sorry. Did somebody say something? No. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the ensign one. No go. Okay. Yeah. So that one uh was emailed to me, but um, you can assign me. I'll take some of those Carolina ones, actually. Because okay. I have a good relationship with Bobby, with okay. Chatham. 
And so he and I talk often, so I could get data from him too. Okay. Yeah, we got a couple in North Carolina and a whole bunch of South Carolina, which I think might be a little bit too out of our conference. Yeah. I'll take North Carolina. Give me yeah. give me those. Done. You got Wait. two. Okay. Cool. All righty. Okay. Got you guys. Well, um, hope you guys will enjoy the rest of your day. Reach out if there's anything at all that I can help with. Okay. We'll do. Thank you. Hey, it's good well. to see you guys. Good to see you guys. See you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.